Gentlemen, welcome back to the desk. Now, I have a new little delivery, and I'm not really one for unboxing, so let's just get straight through this. Now, before you're wondering, and it better be what I'm expecting it's, it's going to be, a couple of videos ago, I, I put a video up about using a Naze 32 board um, as a flight controller and GPS home and return to home and loiter and stuff like that. But I ran into a couple of issues. In fact, there it is there. There's, there's the, uh, we've still got the USB leaks around in the side. And all we've got in there is a NASE32 board, a D4R2 uh, receiver, uh, a GPS, and a little OLED screen on the top. Typically what you would find uh, in a quadcopter. Now, I was looking through the settings, and you could use this, potentially, for uh, a fixed wing. Uh, so I set it up and uh, the stabilization on it is absolutely brilliant. So I had this on a Texumo, stabilization absolutely rock solid, uh, really, really nice to fly. But GPS hold mode, so if you can imagine that this board is a uh, flying wing, what we had there was uh, we fly around stabilized, but every time we put GPS home on, it would either dive into the ground... Uh, which it did twice and broke the nose. Or the last time which we tried it, it I, I've never seen anybody prop hang a tech sumo or a flying wing before. But I kid you not, it just sat there in the air about 80 meters up and just didn't move at all. Um, it was kind of hilarious to watch. And the, the guys up on the flying field, they, they just couldn't believe what was going on. They'd never seen a, a flying wing prop hang itself in the middle of the air. It, it was hilarious. Um, so that basically wrote that off because it either prop hung the Texumo or the flying wing or it just went nose diving towards the ground at maximum throttle. So it was really scary. So I started doing my research and uh, let's get some stuff out of here. Ooh, pretty box. Uh, I started doing my research into flight controllers and I looked up the Pixahawk. Now, Pixahawk, that's a brand new board. Uh, it's been been through several versions and uh, there's two versions available right now. There's 2.4.8 and there's also version 2.4.6. And if you go on Fleabay, then you'll find people um, selling the, the whole kits for 2.4.6. But then there was this newer version. I couldn't see what the difference was. Uh, and it turns out that the difference between the two versions is basically not a lot except for one megabyte. And this is the bit which turned me off the Pixahawk. Basically what's happened on a Pixahawk, uh, right now the, the actual program files go up to uh, about 900 kilobytes or just over. And that means that you only get 100 kilobytes or less available for your settings, for your waypoints or any login or anything like that. Um, well, no logins done on the USB card, but you, you can expand out of that. And of course, there's even a note in the video which will says that once the main core program goes over one megabyte, you're basically stuffed and can't do it anymore. Um, and of course, I could have been a bought a Pixelhawk 2.4.8, and that would have been happy days because you get two meg. But th the bit which has really took me off is that was a programmed in failure or upgrade point for the actual board. So developers being developers, they will carry on adding code continuously uh, and get up to that one meg in probably no time. Uh, again, being a, let's be fair here, I'm, I'm also a web developer myself and um, I, I know what developers are like. So yeah, you're going to keep on adding code and refining it over a period of time and it won't be very long uh, in reality before that one megabyte, that limit is actually being in hit. So, yeah, that really turned me off the Pixelhawk, even though it's like a newer device and it's what other guys are using. That turned me off, so I needed an alternative. So, Dave, um, big hat tip to you, fella, for suggesting the Vector. Uh, the more I went and researched this, uh, that that's it kind of did it for me. So, uh, Vector is made by a company called Eagle Tree Systems, and the bit which I like about this is that it's not only flight stabilization uh, with all the good little features so it works on multi-rotors it'll work on fixed wing including flying wings as well which is the bit which i'm interested in for the fx61 phantom uh, is that it also comes with a current sensor gps as well uh, and return to home settings and as dave put it in on, on facebook he was saying well i've never had a model not come home yet 
Um, so that's that's where we are right now, and hence the box on the desk. I've basically just been and spent twice as much money as what I would have done on a Pixar Hawk, but I'm feeling a lot more confident um, just because of the reviews and the, the insights which I've seen for the Vector. So I hope you can see this on your screen. Um, and I need a knife or a big pair of scissors. Like I said, I don't really do unboxings, so... Um, ooh, saying that, that is very pretty. Uh, let me move my hand out of the way. So that's what we got on there. That's our GP GPS and magnometer. Uh, we've got the uh, actual vector unit itself. Then to give you an idea on dimensions, and by the way, I normally just work in um, uh, Imperial rather than metric. Uh, that's about two and a half inches uh, long by uh, an inch and a quarter wide uh, for the actual unit. And it's not very deep, it's, uh, Oh, half inch, so yeah, definitely an American base system because it seems to match up uh, immediately uh, for the things. And let me just put that on the screen so you can let me move that nice and close. Uh, you'll see that we've got a collection of, of inputs in there. So we've got uh, the uh, um, we've got the uh, on the here. If I'm just have to, it's, by the way, the manual is 88 pages long. Uh, on the end of here, that's our servo inputs. These are our servo outputs. Uh, we've got the USB lead. Now I know that one there's the audio uh, and yeah, it says on the top, there's our video loom and the bus. I'm guessing that's for S port, or sorry, S bus. And then you are, they just labeled that as being for future expandability. Uh, so that's the main board. What are the goodies we got here? Uh, like us on Facebooks. Ooh, sticker. Excellent. Uh, another card. Uh, that's our current sensor. Oh, and here's the kicker for you. It was 20 quid more. So you'll see on this one here, it's got a Dean's connector either side. And it was 20 quid more to have um, XT60s on it. So uh, I will be pulling that apart and saving myself um, 20 quid. We've also got the stand uh, for the, again, little GPS stand. Great for quadcopters. And then in here, we've got our wiring loom. So yeah, there's our wiring loom for the video. We've got our uh, loom for just traditional receivers where you've just got like an eight channel receiver and you just stuff that in the side and poke those in the right places. Uh, and I, oh, that's the GPS lead as well. So I couldn't work out which one that is. That's the GPS lead. So that's the Eagle Tree Vector. What other goodies did I buy? What have we got in here? Shut that to one side. Ooh, yeah, I couldn't resist. I've gone for the uh, LCD display. Uh, it was 25, 30 quid, um, but I really like the idea of having an info panel on the side. So um, if somebody else is launching it or retrieving it for me, they can see the status of the plane. I did also um, grab on there. Oh yeah. Uh, I also did grab the, the Fat Shark uh, FPV wiring loom as well. Uh, it just kind of made sense and the bit which sold it for me uh, was that they had the Immersion RC uh, plugs as well for the video, the audio, ground and then also power as well. I, I really was sold on that. I think that was an extra 12 quid or something like that. Uh, and I also bought the alerter module as well. So that's a little visual alerter. Again, if you're thinking of the fan Phantom, that could be mounted somewhere near the nose. So as you walk in towards the plane, you can actually see... Uh, the status of the plane um, or the, the flying wing as the case, case may be. So, yeah, my, my point of this video is really straightforward. So I, I, I looked at the Vector, sorry, I looked at the Pixar Hawk. Once I dug deeper, I really didn't like what I found. Uh, and it was basically half the price of what I've been paid here for the Vector. But by the way, to give you an idea, the Vector uh, was over 200 quid. Um, including delivery and a couple of extra bonus pieces, uh, whereas the Pixar Hawk would have worked out maybe 110, 120 pounds, something like that. So I could have had two Pixar Hawks for one vector. Um, but then when I looked into more de in more details, this has got a built-in OSD. The the menu system's built into the OSD, and you can either you configure it using the software on the desktop, which to be frank and honest, I'll probably end up doing rather than the the, the on-screen display. But it's all built into one and there's no crappy wiring with uh, the little minimum OSD boards which I've only ever got one to work and they're a right pain in the rear. Um, so this is all built in and that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, yeah, if I was on a budget, maybe I would have more seriously considered the Pixar Hawk. But for me, I, I want my plane to come home. So uh, I've gone for the Vector 
Um, I'm not, not going to likely to be doing a setting up video for this. It's really pretty straightforward. You just um, jam the plugs in the right places. Obviously, you've got to do some calibration and whatnot. Um, so the next time you're going to see him on a, on a video with not only the Vector and the uh, Zeta FX61 Phantom, uh, I'll be off going testing it and giving it its first flight with the stabilization system, uh, the OSD setup and everything. And you'll see what I've, whether I've actually employed in. Uh, cut out a place for the panel to go on or I've just skipped that and that really does feel like a, a meaty uh, LCD screen they've been put in there but yeah that's where we're going to be next and with that said I hope you found this video helpful um, I hope you can kind of understand my reasonings now why I chose a vector at nigh on twice the price uh, compared to a pixel hawk um, I don't like developed in uh, limitations and um, you kind of must have known at the beginning that one meg um, developers being developers that you were going to use it up pretty quickly. So, so anyway, I've talked way too much. On that note, for myself, Matt, cheerios.